for Thou art Lord, most high, above all the earth. Thou art exalted far above all. Amen. Amen. I greet you all in the wonderful and the precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. <laughs> it's the second day of winter. I said, I greet you in the wonderful and the precious name of the Lord and Jesus Christ. We are in a warm place this morning. Amen. We are here in the presence of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We are here to worship Him and Him alone this morning. So welcome to Christ Kingdom Ministries this morning as we come to worship our Savior, our King. Amen. Family of God, we're going to give Him our all this morning. Amen. Welcome to all of those that are connected uh, through social media. Welcome to the house of Christ Kingdom Ministries. This is your father's house, and in this house, miracles happen. So we, we thank you for joining us this morning, and we pray that this morning as we worship the Lord together, that the Lord will meet you at the very point of your need. Uh, this morning, let's close our eyes and raise our hands this morning. Let's give the Lord a round of applause before we invite him. Amen. He needs to hear this applause in heaven. Amen. Amen. Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus. Uh, we thank you, Father, because you loved us first, oh God. We thank you because you set us free, you delivered us, oh God. You called us your children. Father, you wrote our name in your palms, oh God. We thank you because you're a God that said you will never leave us nor forsake us, oh God, even until the end of the age. Uh, this morning we come to reverence your presence. This morning we come to exalt your name. This morning we come to worship you. This morning we come to lift up a banner of praise. For your son Jesus who shed his blood for us, who redeemed us from the curse of sin. We thank you this morning, Father. Come in your own supernatural way this morning. Touch this house this morning, Father. Have your own way this morning, oh God. And we worship you, Father. Then our praises will reach the heavenly Father. And as our praises reach the heavenly Father, that Lord, you will come into our midst this morning, Father. You said you will be there with two or three are gathered, and we are more than two or three, Lord. You said one will put a thousand to flight and two will put ten thousand. Today in our multitude we will put millions to flight this day, oh God. This morning we don't pay any attention to the devil and his devices, uh, but this morning is our time dedicated to you, Lord. We praise you and we worship you, Father. We even bless the preacher man as he comes later on to bring forth your word, oh God. Anoint your word, Father. Anoint your word, Father. Your word is what we need, Father. Your word that will bring alignment. Your word that will bring correction. That your word will bring divine revelation in our life, Father. That your word will change us, oh God. And that your word will set our path straight into your glory, Lord. This morning, we bless you and we thank you. And we invite you into our midst to come and have your own way. For we are all these in Jesus' precious name. Amen and amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Somebody give him praise in the house. Somebody ready to praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, let's praise him. Let's go. Now put your hands together and clap. Come on, let me see it. Let's go. Woo. Jesus, your name is above every name I know. Jesus, 
is your my refuge. You are my only hope. Jesus, you are mighty. My strength is found in you. Jesus, you are Savior. I'm safe when I
Father, we worship you. We glorify you. We come into your presence with thanksgiving in our hearts. Because there's only one day.
uh, uh, chapter 1, verses 12. He said, blessed is the one who perseveres under trial. Because having stood the test, because having stood the test, because having stood the test, that person, that person will receive the crown of life that the Lord has promised to those who love him. And so, beloved, that word is very clear. When you stand the test and go through the perseverance without quitting and without giving up, there is a reward. There is a blessedness. There is a miracle. There is a fulfillment of purpose. There is a fulfillment of promises that awaited you. And I know that many of you are going through life's challenges, facing hardships and difficulties that seem to overwhelm you, facing everyday trials that seem to weigh you down. Your goals and your dreams seem unattainable. It seems like you are swimming against the tide. Your mind is saying, give up. Quit believing. The evidence is all around you. Says, quit pursuing that goal. Quit waiting for your breakthrough. Quit trusting God. Quit standing on the promises of God. Your mind and your heart is saying, how long more before I get my breakthrough? How long more must I wait for my miracles? How long must I forge ahead before I get my deliverance? Now, beloved, this is one of Satan and his disciples' greatest weapon to bring a lie to the church of Jesus Christ. He wants you to quit before your breakthrough comes. He wants you to quit before the manifestation of God through miracles in your life. He is buffeting your mind to doubt Jesus and to doubt the word. That's all he wants you to do. He wants you to doubt God. He wants you to doubt the sovereignty of his word. He wants you to doubt your king, your savior, your Messiah, Jesus Christ. Beloved, the word of God is very clear. In Galatians 6, 9, it says, let us not grow weary. Let us not get tired while doing good. For in due time, for in the proper time, for soon you will reap if you do not lose heart. And so often you see that. When the biggest trials come, it is so easy to shout hallelujah. It is so easy to praise the Lord. It's so easy to dance. It's so easy to be a blessing when everything is going right. But when the cards are falling, when everything around you is going terrible, when everything is going against your expectation, the Bible says that's when you don't lose heart. That's when you don't lose heart and you don't quit. In other words, it means the church must push on. The first wave comes. Beloved, it's not going to kill you. You will dive and go through it. When we were youngsters, we only swam in beaches where, where, where the, 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 the sharks grazed. Because in the apartheid time, all were taken for themselves, the best beaches. So we learned in the most hostile of waves, huge waves, to survive it, we dive and go through it and we come up and we face the another. But I want to say to you, there's an anointing, there's an aggressing, there's an, a divine empowerment that is upon you as the children of the living God. Before you were born, you had that grace. Before you were even in your mother's womb, God saw you that you will be without blame. That God saw you that you will be mighty. That God saw you that you will complete the purpose he put in you. I want to say to you, do you think a God who anointed you? Do you think God who appointed 
appointed you will allow you to fail, will allow you to be destroyed, lest you don't believe. Yes, lest you quit. God cannot do it. I want to say we were built not to stand, but we are built to overcome. We are built to overcome. Resist the feeling of discouragement. Resist that feeling of discouragement. Cast it out. Cast it out. Cast it out. The Bible goes on to encourage us. It is written, blessed is the one who perseveres under trial. He said, in the end, you will be rewarded. The word blessed means highly favored. Fortunate, happy is the one under trial. How can that be? Because God knows more. Amen. You are the recipient of God's grace and provisions. The Bible does not say cursed is the one who goes to trials. The Bible does not say that the trials you face or facing will destroy you. No. Tell your neighbor, no. But a blessing that follows trials. How awesome is that? That means in your darkest hour, when everything is falling, the idea is take your eye out and look to the future and see the promise and see what God has for you. Can I hear an amen? Beloved, I could have quit a thousand times, plus a thousand times, plus a thousand. I would have never been a pastor if I listened to every word against me. I would have given up on the first day when someone says you're useless. It was prophesied against me. We'll close down. We're still standing. You know why? It is not because of me. It's because of Jesus. I stand on the promise. You will stand on the promise. Can I hear? Amen. It's not about anything. It's about promise. It is about the word of God in your life. You don't give up on it. It is precious. Can I hear? Amen. Beloved, there's a blessing that follows. Something good is going to come out of your perseverance. Keep trusting. Keep believing. Keep in faith. The end will testify. Can I, how awesome is that? The end will testify. Everyone got the situation. When we went in the tent, they said we're closing down. But in the end, wait for the end. The story is not finished yet. Wait in your life. The story is not finished yet. Wait for it. Wait for it. Wait for it. Can I hear amen? Come on. It must be understood that our happiness is independent of circumstances. Happiness is not about things. It is independent of all that. Happiness is that glory that is inside you. It is self-contained. It means regardless of what you face every day, inside of you, the outside is trouble, but inside is shalom. Inside is shalom. Because the covenant of peace, the prince of peace is here. The prince of peace is here. Can I hear? Amen. And if Christians don't lose that, don't lose that. Amen. You know, when they look at you, they must think you're a, you're a billionaire. Everyone thinks I'm a billionaire. Hey, you understand? Everything thinks I'm God's favorite. But you know what? I behave in that manner. As I serve a great God. Can I hear amen? Let the enemy say what he wants. But you will behave as a son of God. You will behave as a champion of God. Can I hear amen? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Beloved, I want to say to you this day, you can be genuinely blessed. Okay. That peace that passes all understanding, it'll keep your hearts and minds through Jesus Christ. As Christians, we know we'll have to go through tribulations. It is written. So don't be surprised. Jesus declared in John 16, 33, in the world you'll have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Because he overcame you will overcome. And that's why I said, be of good cheer. Be happy. Be happy in the midst of all the trouble. Be happy. Because I overcame, you will overcame. You will overcome. As I am in heaven, so are you on the earth. Can I hear amen? 
Victory belongs to the most persevering. Victory belongs to you who push. Victory belongs to you who don't give up. What is perseverance? It is endurance combined with absolute assurance and certainty that what we are looking for is going to happen. It is much more than just hanging on. You know, we also say hang on, hang on. It is more than just hanging on. It is our supreme effort of refusing to believe that we will fail. That's why we'll push. Because, I mean, we sit in our hearts and minds and thoughts that what God has laid before us, it is achievable and we will do it. Despite what we feel now. This is, this is what it means to persevere, to push. It is an act of continuing in what we believe to be true without interruption. In spite of difficulty and opposition. It is getting through the difficult times to stand fast and firm against opposition. You push, you push, you push ahead. Every opposition again, you push ahead. You push ahead. Courageous endurance to persist against all odds. That's what it is. Everything to persist against all odds. Perseverance simply means, beloved, not giving up. Tell your neighbor, don't give up. Don't give up. Even when it's very hard. Even when it's very hard, we'll continue in faith. We'll continue in strength and hope and belief. Because we know the end will be victorious. You must believe though. You must believe this word is true. You must believe the promises of God is true. The Greek word uh, uh, that's uh, pronounced as Upomone, which pronounced, which is spelled H-U-P-O-M-O-N-E, for person, it's patience, patient endurance, patient endurance. Wait, 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 wait. Patient endurance. I'm being slain. Wait. I've been beaten. Wait. Sickness is not going. Wait. On him, on the promises, you don't give up on his word. It is a described, one of the translations, and I like this, it is a described as the ability of a plant to thrive in a harsh environment, literally in a desert or rocky slopes or in a barren place. Beloved, the word is, this is who you are. Amen. Born to overcome. To endure to the end. You are like that plant upon the earth. Made to survive. Amen. Made to survive. Even though there's not much income. No, there's not much whatever resources. Like this plant in a desert. You will stand. You will flourish. And you will bloom. Can I hear? And you will still help others. This is who you are. Listen to me. Built inside of you is the Holy Ghost. Power that is inside of you. Built inside of you is the Word. Christ in us. I can do all things through Christ. Through Christ who strengthened me. Beloved, come on. We have been built in staying power. Never to give up. Let us look at some of the examples recorded in the Bible. That's going to help us to understand endurance and perseverance. And let me tell you, one of the great examples, I think one of the prominent, one of the most prominent kings in the Bible, who you think that is? And that is King David. Here's a little story. He started off as a shepherd boy. I want to talk about perseverance. I want to talk about not giving up. I want you to think that many of you went through many challenges and and you think, hey, you understand why me? But the Bible has given us examples of perseverance to show that we can persevere and attain. A shepherd boy. When he was a shepherd boy, he was a young boy that was left alone in the fields, away from his brothers. 
His brothers had the, the big house and to deal with whatever and go with Saul the king to fight battles and do whatever it is, serve the father. But this boy go into the fields in the mountains and watch over the sheep. Alone, this young boy had to face the bear and the lion when they came to kill the sheep. He could not call any of his brothers or anyone. He was the watchman. He knew every bleat of the sheep, smell of sheep. Beloved, he did not enjoy the privileges of his brother. Oftentimes, they tormented him. As a youngest, they, the brothers tormented him because they thought they were bigger and stronger. You know, they made him feel unworthy. He was despised by his own family. Even his father, Jesse, did not acknowledge David. Because when God told Samuel the prophet to go and anoint another king for Israel, Samuel the prophet went to the house of Jesse. And he said, where's all your boys? Line them up. But the father left this one out. I want to say to you, better get it right now. Our father leaves no one out. In fact, in fact, in the kingdom, the weakest become the mightiest. That's the way the kingdom operates. The nobodies become the somebodies. That's how it works in the kingdom. So every one of you is special. So I want you to start to see this thing. When your own family despises you and rejects you. This guy was not even acknowledged to make the lineup. Not even to say, hey, let the man see his face, man. This is my youngest. You're only going to brag with your youngest now. Father said, no, leave it out. David was not, because they, the father thought he was not suitable. All he knew, go and deal with the sheep. Deal with the sheep. Go there, outside. You don't be in the palace. But you know what? But God had him in mind. You see, when the anointing is on you, the anointing shows no favoritism. The anointing recognizes another anointing and grace upon you. And said, I've been through them all. Mm, they look so nice. They look so strong. And now they, you, that one, they'll be my security guard. That one's going to be. But there's one for the pulpit. There's one for the throne. There's one. These guys are not there. There's one for the throne. God remembered David. And Saul anointed him. He was only about 15 years old. He did a study between 15 and 20, but he was probably about 15, 16 years old. David was anointed to be king. And that's when the trouble started. Beloved, the day you got the word, the day pastor came and anointed you with oil, line you up and carry in all these men and anointing you. Oil is falling everywhere and we're giving you the word of God and then you go home and everyone going to kill each other and tomorrow the dog wants to bite you and you wonder what's happening, what's happening. These men are not of God. But I tell you what, the enemy is coming to challenge the word. The devil is coming to challenge the word and said it's not for you. But God said that word is for you. God anointed David to be king. God anointed David to be king. But the trouble was going to start now. And after you, he killed Goliath. Yo, Saul wanted to kill him. Imagine an entire army. The entire army of Israel wanted to kill one man. Wanted to kill one man who, who didn't even make it a lineup to become a soldier. Are you hearing this? Now you're telling me this guy is not into trouble, not having problems already. His life is not having problems. Are you understanding? You're telling me you got problems. I'm going to tell you some more problems here. The man had to run. He had no home now for him. Left family, the family who disowned him. Didn't recognize him. Where he's in the wilderness. Hiding in the caves. His own friends, as he's meeting his friends and other armies who helped them. They too selling him out. They go and tell him, Saul, no, this man here, they're eating with him. He helped them to fight battles. Sally, they're going behind his back and say, hey, Saul, give us something. This man is there. He could trust no one. This man, how oftentimes he was left hungry. In a harsh terrain, in a harsh environment. With all the bandits all around him. He had to fight for his life. That's why he went to Nabal for some food there. 
That's how he met her, Abby. Yeah, he, this man, he was on the run. He had nothing, but he was anointed to be king. But you know what? He never lose his faith. He probably gave up. He probably gave and all those things on the run. But he had never time. He said, I'm quitting on all these things. But he knew this God. He left, he was left as a nobody. Hunted like a dog. Hunted like a dog to die. What miserable things he faced. You got your home. You got food to eat. This man had to hide in the mountains with his own team. He had no place. Beloved, everywhere he faced danger constantly. He, that's why he could pen in Psalms 116, 3, he said, Sorrows and death compass me, and the, and, the, and the pains of hell got hold of me, and the pains of hell got hold of me. I found only trouble and sorrow. He says in Psalms 18, 4 and 5, The sorrows of death compass me, and the floods of the ungodly men make me afraid. David remained a fugitive, beloved, for approximately 15 years. He was on the run. How long have you waited for God and quitted? 15 years. He experienced the loss of his best friend. His trusted friend, Jonathan, Saul's son. A person died and he got this news. The one who is, I'm a bearer, his closest one. Not only his brothers were never close like this one, died. Have you experienced such losses? And then, you know what? He experienced betrayal of his own son, Absalom, who tried to take over his kingdom, kicked the father out, even took the father's wives. There's a man who's facing it all, but he pushed every day. Because there was a, someone placed oil on him. Someone placed oil on him. Someone placed oil on him for a purpose. He pushed on. And then suddenly he makes a boo-boo. He loses his first child. His firstborn died. Firstborn died. Look at that now. I mean, this man went through, he went through pain and suffering. His faith was tried and tested and proved. He learned to see. He, he learned from the so adversities the value of the word of God. He learned from the promises of the word of God what it is to stand his life was very difficult very difficult before he could reign as king now let me say this these graces were improved in him by his afflictions are you getting that word the suffering he went through prepared him for greatness otherwise he would have never been the one who he finally was David would have not been a, such an excellent model for kings as he was if he had obtained the throne like the rest of his successors by hereditary right. It's so easy to say, son of the house, become king. But he didn't gain the throne like that. Not only the ordination of God, but he was prepared for the throne in the wilderness. In the caves, the bandits prepared him. The armies of the Philistines prepared him. Lack of food, hunger, the weather prepared him, Jay, to be the king, a mighty king like no other king. In it, he learned what it is to have no food. In it, he learned what it is to have compassion. He was broken, so he knew how to love. He was broken, so he knew how to show compassion. He was broken, so he knows how to show grace. That is why even the man that tried to kill him, when he was killed, when Saul was killed, David comes to a place, has he not got one that I can bless? And he brought Mephibosheth to the throne. He said, you will come, and I will restore your father's kingdom to you. It could have never happened. If he was never prepared in the wilderness. If God never break him. And I want to say to you something, beloved. You may be getting broken right now. You may be losing everything around you. But I say stand. I say stand. I say stand. Somebody say stand. Yeah. Come on, come on. Beloved, listen to me. The graces were improved in him. 
His experience of misery taught him to pity and to support the miserable. Some of you, God sometimes allows us to go through a breakdown because there's a breakthrough to come. If you don't know what it is to love, he's going to push you, he's going to push you, he's going to push you. If you don't know what it is to forgive, he's going to push you, he's going to leave everyone to torment you, to haunt you, till you learn to forgive. Can I hear amen? Why? Because he has a purpose. Because he has a plan for your life. He don't want to destroy you. But there's sometimes only on the field you get the training. Many times you go, medical staff, they got all the books for open heart surgery. Yo, if they got no training, if they got no training, they'll remove the wrong valve. I'm telling you, so it is in the kingdom. Now watch this here. David is a life of endurance through hardship. Perseverance through, through hardship. He kept the faith and trust. Are you getting this? He waited, waited 15 years, man of God, 15 years. Some of you are restless because God is taking a little too long. You are restless. You are restless. You've got ants in your pants. You are restless. That's a phrase in the world, by the way. You are restless. You are restless. You don't want to wait. When I joined First Ministry, my spiritual father that time, after we were ready, he made us wait seven years more. Before we could take the pulpit. And anoint you as a general pastor. But you know what? It brought training. Resilience. Fortitude. Because we weren't worried about the title. We worried about seeing the miracles. Can I hear amen? Now i got a word for you here. Many of you in the situation. When David lost his firstborn. Everything fell apart. Imagine your firstborn. He hit the ground, sackcloth and ashes, and he wept and wept. No more the crown. He said he wept like he had no skin. No one want to go near him because they're scared. Let him weep. I want to say to you where you are right now. <clears throat> Sometimes the best go into your shower. Open the water nicely. Cry as much as you want to want to cry. Let the water wash all your teeth. Cry till you finish. Till your sides are sore. Come out. And you'll be ready. In this manner here, I've got a word that needs you need to work on. In 2 Samuel 12, 20. And I've shared, done a, a demonstration here many years ago. I don't know when it was. But David arose from the ground. Number one, wake up, wake up, arise from that ground of ashes. Wake up, wake up, and arise from that ashes. He arose from the ground. He washed and he anointed himself. Come on, wash away those weeping ashes. Wash away all those sadness from your face. It is time to put on your makeup. It is time to smile. It is time to dance. It is time to take the oil and anoint yourself and say, I am the beloved of God. I am going to fulfill my purpose. I am no matter what. I don't care what I lost, but I'm going forward because I'm going with my God. I don't know what is going on, but I'm going with my God. I anoint myself. I anoint myself and I am ready for war. Take out your weeping clothes. Some of you, when you said you only want to wear that nighty, you want to wear this thing, whatever tea, you're wearing that old outfit, kick it out, burn it. Can I hear amen? Put on a new outfit. Put on something good. Can I hear amen? Put on your jewelry. Put on your jewelry. Look nice. Can I hear amen? Come on. You're not going to look in the mirror like someone killed you. You're going to look in the mirror like someone blessed you. Can I hear amen? That's what we need. That's what we did. That's what David, he threw away his clothes. Clothes of mourning, he threw it away. Some of you only wearing black. I rebuke it now in the name of Jesus. 
Only one I'm on. Only one I'm on. I rebuke it. Put some color. Put some color. Put some color. Can I hear? Even grace no good. Even grace no good. Put some color. Can I hear? Amen. Come on. This is a day. This is a day to arise. To believe God. And what he does, Fozzy. Finish it doing himself. Put the makeup. Put the new clothes. Bright color too. So Pastor can see you. Bright color he come. <laughs> the Bible says now. He got up. Took all the money. Washed himself. Then he walked into the temple of the Lord. He went into the house of the Lord. And he began to worship. Some of you. It is time to come and worship. Leave that problem. Let God be God. Let God be God. Can I hear amen? Worship the Lord. Sing. Sing like you got a million bucks. Sing, sing like everything worked out. Can I hear amen? Come on. After that, hey, he was anointed now. After that, he was anointed. He wasn't critical. He fight back home. He went back home. Fussy. Went to the table. And this is the Lord's table. Let's tell us about persevere. He went to the table and he ate. He went and he was with his wife. She was finished weeping. But the joy, the strength, and the new hope that was on him came upon her. And Solomon was born. I want to say to you, the enemy has taken something there's a Solomon waiting. There's a Solomon waiting. There's another son waiting. Can I hear amen? There's a breakthrough waiting. There's a breakthrough waiting. But that breakthrough is going to come through worship. That breakthrough is going to come to joy. That breakthrough is going to come by believing in Jesus and not giving up. We are crying over our past. How long are you going to mourn for Saul? How long are you going to cry for Saul? Release it, because I have someone else in mind. Can I hear amen? Some of you are mourning your past too long. It is time to persevere. Push. So many of you have prophecies. So many of you have so many prophecies. You have words spoken. Some of you are anointed. You're blessed. And what happens? Beloved, in the midst of your experiences, let me tell you, God is preparing you for greatness. Don't give up on the vision. It is for an appointed time. But in between, you're going to go to trouble, but push. Because you'll be victorious. Can I hear amen? In 2 Samuel 5, 1 to 10, David was anointed king over Israel. Beloved, he waited many, many years before he finally took the throne. Everyone wants a quick fix. Microwave. Put in one minute and it goes over one and a half minutes. Say, Your husband, buy a new microwave. This is not working. You want it quick. You want bigger microwave, more power. You understand? Hey, you want it now. But the Bible says, Wait. Patient, 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 patient. No patience because everything is done quick. Beloved, listen to me. God got you in mind. Just go with the flow with him. Can I hear amen? Like David, I want to say, wake up from the ground in the morning. Come on, beloved. God has never abandoned you. As we think we are abandoned. Listen to me. Blessed is the one who continues to trust. In the Lord with all your heart. And some of you, we lost battles. You know why? Because we lost heart. We allowed ourselves to be depressed. We lost battles. You know why? Because we lost faith and belief. That that word is true. That that word is true. That, that you will travel nations. You will be this. You lost heart. You know why? Because you didn't give it the first place to go for Jepson. And so you're quitting now on the nations. Don't lose heart. If God gave the word, it must come to pass. God will make it to pass as long as you're faithful. Are you hearing this? Amen. But you're going to persevere. You're going to push for your dream. Can I hear? Some of you, you just want to leave your job. 
because of that one irritating you, that one is against you. You quit it, you sit home, and you've got nothing to pay your rent. Foolish, foolish, foolish. Enemy love, love me. He said, yo, i got for you. I've finished you. Listen to me. If you, if, you, if you are strong, you must make the others quit because of you. You go in there, get in the face. You get in the face. This is who you are. You stand as a servant of God and let God promote you. You will prophesy the word. Go into the office, prophesy your favor. Bind this demon. Shut the tongue. You have the power. Can I hear amen? You don't give up. Let the devil give up. Let those against you give up. Can I hear amen? Come on now. Come on, you keep seeking and striving. And lastly, in two minutes, let me just, just give this. Hebrews 12, 2 and 3 says, looking unto Jesus, fixing your eye, that means on Jesus, the author and the finish of your faith. This is it, beloved. Who, the joy that was set before him, endured the cross. Wow. The joy that was set before him for the things that was beyond the cross, for the joy that was set before him to sit upon the throne and to rule and behold all authority is given to me in heaven and earth. And to be the judge of the whole world. For that joy, he was willing to endure the cross. I want to say there's a joy set before you in fulfillment. Can I hear amen? Endure your cross now. Don't throw your cross. Enjoy it. There's a joy that is set before you. He said, that's why in verse 3 it says, he despised the shame and he sat down at the right hand of the, verse 3. He said, for consider him who enjoyed. Come on, hostility. Consider him. Come on. Put your, your, your strength in him. Think about what he has done. Let him be your ultimate reference. Consider him in your problem right now. He enjoyed it all. If he did it, you can do it. He is a supreme example of perseverance and endurance. Beloved, Luke says in 951, the NRV, as the time approached for him to be taken up to heaven, Jesus resolutely set out for Jerusalem. Watch this here. When the time came, Gary, for him to face the cross, look what the word the, the Lord ends up using there. Jesus resolutely sets. Resolutely means he made up his mind to endure and not shrink from any kind of degree of suffering which will be necessary to accomplish the great work which he was to be engaged with firm determination. He was willing to face being spat on, being tortured, being ridiculed, being chained, being beaten, and, and ultimately die. I want to say to you this day, beloved, to you today, there's an anointing to persevere. There's an anointing to make it. We're not going to be quitters this year. Can I hear amen? Are you going to quit this year? Okay. We skip all the examples of the Apostle Paul. But I want to say to you this day, Romans 12, 12, rejoicing in hope, persevering uh, tribulation, devoted in prayers. Without prayer, you will succumb to your trials. Because in prayer, you focus on God. Without, how strong is your prayer life? Your prayers will determine the end result. No prayer, no success. No faith, no success. No belief, no success. No perseverance, no success. Blessed is the one who perseveres. Blessed is the one who don't give up. Can I hear amen? With Jesus, you are able. With the Holy Ghost, you are able. With the word of promise, you are able. No giving up, no quitting. The Lord wants you to persevere. Can I hear amen? And so we come to the table. Can I get my coat there, please? Everyone come to the table. The leaders. This table is the ultimate about the one who persevered. And you know what? We're going to drink of this blood and eat of his body that we become one. If he did it, we're going to do it. Are you hearing me today? This table is a table of perseverance and conquering and accomplishing. And so today, we're going to partake of the one who conquered, the one who made it, the one who endured, that we too can do it. Can I hear amen? Hallelujah. How many of you are going through your darkest hours and the answers haven't come for years? You're just like giving up. Raise your hand quickly. 
He said, no one. Okay, raise your hand. Don't be scared. Raise your hand. Many times I said, Lord, where have I sinned? Where have I sinned? Because we got our breakthroughs, but not the full breakthrough. Sometimes don't we say as pastors, why? You know, why is it taking so long? But I want to say to you, beloved, who raised your hand. Number one, understand this. He loves you. Number two, all of us, if we're going to have our breakthrough, when you have given up on things, all you got to do is say, Father, forgive me for quitting. Forgive me, I repent for giving up. But fortify me again to the Holy Ghost with strength and power that I will finish. Can I hear an amen? Some of you are waiting a long time for your breakthrough. I just want to give you a word today, it's coming. But sooner than, than you expect. It is coming. Your breakthrough is coming. It's on its way. Can I hear an amen, somebody? <clears throat> Let this table prove it. Let this table work for you because he paid the price for you. He died for you. He shed his blood for you. Can I hear an amen? Hallelujah. And so, Lord, I sanctify the, 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 the blood and the bread, the juice and the bread. I declare it holy unto the Lord. On the same night in which he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, this is my body which is broken for you. As often as he eats it, you do it in remembrance of me. Beloved, as you're going to eat it, you're going to remember him. You're going to remember how he endured. You're going to remember how he persevered. But so also you're going to remember how he rose up beyond the cross to fulfill purpose and this. Are you getting this? We're going to remember this today. This table is very important. After the same manner, after he supped, he took the cup. When he supped, he said, he drank this of the cup. He said, this is the cup of the New Testament in my blood. As often as you drink it, you do it in remembrance of me. As, as much as you eat of this bread and of this cup, how often as you eat it, you also do it to show the Lord's death till he comes. And so we give you praise, Lord. Hallelujah. So, Lord, I bless every heart. I invite you, if you declare Jesus Christ as Lord, to partake with us in communion this morning. Please. I'm 
said blessed is the one who perseveres and for him in the end he will receive a crown of life but also like the others your servants of God through the old father they received their position visions were realized purposes were realized and so I give you glory today we remember you Jesus you are our example the great I am and I thank you for the power of the Holy Ghost in us. That today, everyone that is going through the trouble will rise up from the ground. As you rose from the cross, may they rise up again. May they rise up with strength and hope and worship and believe our God that your word over their life is true. They'll not give up. And so this day we take in remembrance of you you were victorious, so we'll be victorious. You conquered, so we'll conquer. And we give you praise. Now, thank you for your, bro your broken body that we in turn can be whole. Eat in remembrance of Jesus. was shed for you. We repent this day, Lord, of every area we failed in, in thought, word, and deed. We repent if we have given up and not trusting God for our purpose and miracles. We repent. Forgive us this day. I thank you. Your blood was shed because you forgave us and we received the forgiveness of our sins. And so today we, re we drink of this blood we are sanctified, we made right with you in Jesus' mighty name. And it's through the blood we are powered to do also great things. Drink in remembrance of him. Amen. You may take your seat as we do the announcement and take up the offering. While Prophet Live is coming up, just to, in case maybe you missed the word, Pastor's got no problem you're wearing black. <laughs> I'm just saying that, you know what? When you're mourning, it is time to shine. Are you hearing? If you're not mourning, you can wear any color. Can you understand what I'm saying? I've got no problem in case you go home now and say, we've got money to buy another one now. I've got no problem with that. I, amen. Beloved, have you received the word? Amen. Are we rising up? Amen. Amen. Amen, amen. Once again, if anyone that's visiting us for the first time that came in a bit late, I missed you. Is there anyone visiting us for the first time? Can I see your hands quickly? Cool. Praise God. Before I get to the announcements, family, please take this word and share this word. Because really, Pastor doesn't know when he spoke this word, the Spirit of God was so great. This week I had about 20 ministers phoning, wanting to quit. He said, we've got a prophetic word even from you, prophet, and it never come to pass. It's time to quit, he told me. 
and what a word. Please share this word so the guys can share and read of this word and understand God's purpose. Amen. God is good. This Tuesday, our fasting and prayer at 7 p.m. miracle service. And you guys know what happens on a Tuesday. And if you're watching at home, you need to be here on a Tuesday night. Amen. Our Bible school is Wednesdays uh, with Apostle uh, Craig and uh, Pastor Apostle Harold from Pochepson that travel all the way at 6.30 p.m. I understand it takes him two hours to get here. So while you're coming from work and thinking it's late, they're traveling two hours to get here at 6.30. So that's Bible school. Intercession Thursday at 9 a.m. with Auntie Millie and the team. We have the Epic Youth Ministry at 7 p.m. this Friday and Deliverance Ministry on Saturday with Pastor Stanley at 12 p.m. The evangelism team that for Saturday, the June the 8th in Margate. Please contact Kieran for details at the back. That's a handsome guy with less hair at the back. Amen. Now, Tuesday is the last day that you can give your names. It's the cutoff day. And we're expecting God to do great things. That's what we're about. Go into the world and preach the gospel and make disciples of all men. Next Sunday, there's two services at 7.30 and 9.30 a.m. and Children's Church at both services. Our condolence goes out for Pastor Aniel and Pastor Linda and the rest of the church to Ricky and Molly and family on the home calling of their dad. Thank God we have this comfort there. Amen. It's giving time. Amen. Would you stand with me in your seat? In your heart this morning, you've already purposed, I would believe, on what to sow. Then the Lord loves a cheerful giver. But CKM, and I've heard from the pastor and the finances, your guy has always been faithful. But we need a little push for 2025 for the conflict that's coming up. And for the land that we've acquired across the road, those that pledged, we need to inquire, acquire more land. Amen. So we need to go over and above that pledge. We need to buy the street off of it. Make it Jesus country. Praise God. And as you bring your tithes and offering into this house, hold it in your hand. Father, you love a cheerful giver. You said give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaking together and running over. You said giving is a form of worship to you, Father. And today we worship you with our tithes and offerings. We worship you in our giving. And we know, Lord, little becomes much in the Master's hand. We know that as we give, Father, you'll open the heavens. As we give, depression leaves. As we give, we take this word today, Father, that there's going to be a move in our benefit today, Father. And as we bless you with finances, we thank you, Father, that you're a faithful God, and we give you praise in Jesus' name. no fear cause I believe there is no doubt cause I have seen your faithfulness my fortress over and over I have a hope finding your Finding your grace, your faithfulness, my fortress, over and over. Make way to the waters, walk me to the fire, do what you are famous for, what you are famous for.
in seats but what your decisions you make or you can go forward and trust God for, to do everything amen so raise your hand I was going to bless you beloved thank you for your faithfulness we'd love to see the Tuesday night increase with faithfulness because I wish truly see an awesome impartation on the Tuesday night as well and so father for your beloved I release the blessing of God, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. I release the precious blood of Jesus upon you. I pray God's divine protection upon you. I pray his hand upon you. I place the name of Yahweh. I place the name of Jesus over your life. Declaring no weapon formed against you will prosper. And every tongue raised against you in judgment 
We bring to no effect in the name of Jesus. The Lord is a wall of fire about you. And he is the glory in the midst. May the Lord favor you this week. May he give you the strength to persevere. But may he give you the strength to overcome. May he give you the strength to see your fulfillment. May he give you the anointing to rise up again. And believe him for the vision he placed in your life. I bless you indeed for a victorious week. May he command his blessing upon you and all that you set your hand to do. Go in peace. The Lord your God is with thee. Be strong in him now. In Jesus' name, amen.